On September 10 the Russian armed forces had launched a counteroffensive in the Kursk region. Servicemen from one of the units in the border region told that airborne and marine units had driven the Ukrainian armed forces out of four settlements, Gordievka, Bayakovo, Nezipnoi, and Viktorovka. The battles for neighboring villages continue, the enemy is retreating, as soon as we have confident control, we will report on other villages, said the RTVI source. The MASH telegram channel was one of the first to report on the Russian armed forces offensive in the Kursk region. According to the channel, the Russian military drove the Ukrainian armed forces out of the village of Gordievka in an hour and a half, and also began counterattacks in the areas of Apanasovka and Martinovka. In total, 10 plus km of territory were liberated in 24 hours, MASH claims. Military expert Mikhail Zvinchuk writes that the Russian armed forces launched a counterattack on one of the sections of the front, liberating two settlements in less than a day and starting battles in at least two more. Some of the Ukrainian armed forces units in the area are under threat of encirclement, while the advanced groups of Russian troops continue their offensive both to the south and to the east, Mikhail Zvinchuk reports. Zvinchuk reports that Russian troops are conducting a counteroffensive on the Gordivkas Nagast line. To the north of the latter, Russian paratroopers have made significant progress, taking control of the approaches to the village and entering its territory, the expert points out. War correspondent Yuri Kotnok reported that, according to preliminary data, the Russian armed forces have liberated Snagast. During the offensive at Snagast, dozens of Ukrainian soldiers were killed, some surrendered, the Telegram Channel Operation Z war correspondence of the Russian Spring reports. Deputy head of the main military political department of the Ministry of Defense and commander of the Chechen Special Forces, Akhmet Apti Alodinov announced very large losses of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. The Ukrainian military personnel stationed in Snagist were unable to withstand the onslaught and retreated in the direction of Lubomovka, and then in the direction of Zeleny Shlyak, the Ingpra Zvetka telegram channel claims. Massive artillery and airstrikes were carried out, helicopters carried out a number of successful raids. At the moment, massive artillery preparation is ongoing, the Post says. According to Mikhail Zvinchuk, Ukrainian troops were driven out of some positions in Apanasivka and its environs, as well as in the area of the village of October 10. As Zvinchuk writes, as a result of Russian counterattacks, the Ukrainian armed forces were under threat of encirclement in the area of the village of Krasnuktyabrsky. According to the Telegram channel, Operation Z, or correspondence of the Russian Spring, Ukrainian troops were driven out of almost a dozen settlements. Cleansing and consolidation continues in all settlements, the publication says. In particular, the Ukrainian armed forces were driven out of Komarovka, Sheptakovka and Vishnevka, claims Operation Z. In addition, our forces are attacking near Borky, Pogrebki and Martinovka, the Telegram channel reports. The Kursk operation helped Ukraine seize an area the size of Los Angeles and put Russia in an awkward position. It also appears to be disrupting Russia's rail system. And if the US agrees to Ukraine's demands to allow deeper strikes into Russia using American-made missiles, Russia's ability to move troops and supplies could be seriously damaged, Business Insider reports. Russia depends on the railway to transport troops and weapons. Russian units do not have the organic transport capacity to operate away from railheads. The problem today is that the massing of forces from all over Russia, some 30,000 troops, according to Ukrainian estimates, to block a Ukrainian invasion is overloading railheads in the Kursk area and creating a shortage of locomotives. Russian railways were already in poor condition before the Kursk operation. Russian bloggers warned that Western sanctions against ball-bearing exports to Russia had led to poor maintenance and a shortage of locomotives. Russian railway officials were reportedly threatened with punishment and in 2023, Russian railway management admitted that 42,600 trains had been cancelled last year due to a lack of locomotive maintenance and spare parts. Experts say Russia's rail system has enough depth to cope with disruptions. 
A Ukrainian invasion could force Russia to reroute military logistics to the Kharkov front via neighboring regions. This would extend the time it takes to get supplies from the Leningrad and Moscow military districts, but it is unlikely to be a significant delay said Callum Fraser, a Russia expert at the Royal United Services Institute, a think tank in Britain. However, Ukraine has collected data on the Russian rail system, which would make disruption easier, Fraser said. The digitalization of Russian rail infrastructure, including aspects such as the integrated infrastructure management system, means that Ukraine has access to data on arms shipments from the captured rail station. There may be more weaknesses in this system that Ukraine could exploit, the expert added. Ukrainian aircraft have already destroyed several bridges over the Seam River east of Kursk. However, the Biden administration has refused to grant Ukraine permission to launch long-range ATACMS missiles at targets in Russia across the Ukrainian-Russian border. Baros believes that Ukraine could seriously disrupt Russian rail traffic and logistics if the US lifts these restrictions. The Russian rail network in the Bryansk, Kursk, Oryol, Belgorod and Voronezh regions has some natural bottlenecks where these rail lines go over bridges to cross rivers. It would be great if, for example, Ukrainian forces could reduce the ability of Russian forces to use the rail in this sector by using ATACMS to destroy these rail bridges, Baros said.